Hey folks, and welcome to Truck King. If you watch the channel, you know that we are almost always towing trailers. It's something that not only do we do for work, but we do in our personal lives as well. So in this video, we want to talk about specifically backing up with the trailer on, because we all know it's usually the most stressful part of trailer ownership. It can be a tough thing to learn. So we're going to go over five of the most common mistakes that we see when people are backing up trailers. So let's launch straight into it at number one, practice. Now this, again, might seem obvious, but I feel like a lot of people get taught how to back up a trailer. They do it once or twice successfully, and then that's it. They just feel like they can do it. Well, backing a trailer is always going to be different. Every scenario is different. Every parking lot, camping space, boat launch is different. So the more practice you have, the better you're going to be at it. And the more practice you have in non-stressful situations, will help you to manage the stressful ones. So again, I'll talk about me personally. I really learned to back up a trailer with an ATV and a tiny little utility trailer. And that was one of the best things to learn on because the shorter the trailer, the tougher to back up. A lot of people don't think that, but that is also true. It reacts really quickly. And I would just go out in our big parking lot and just back around in circles until I felt like I could do anything with that little trailer. And yeah, that practice, again, really made me confident. So then when I got into bigger trucks and bigger trailers, it was just no big deal. However, I'm going to throw this out there because the problem with practice is not that people don't want to practice. It's that they've gone out and in the course of whatever their towing experience is, they've backed up and they hated it. They hated it. It was hard. It was difficult. It was embarrassing. Okay. Everybody is giving you a hard time. People are waiting for you. Your wife's on you and you're just not getting it. So... The next time you think about it and say, I need to learn about this, you're like, no, I don't want to go through that stress again. So you avoid backing up forever. Mm -hmm. There are guys who have been towing for years and years and years, and they will only go into places where they can pull straight in and straight out for exactly that reason. And it's unfortunate because if you do the practice, you'll learn and that anxiety goes away. Sure, my last little tip here. And I'm not even joking about this. If you can get yourself a little toy like this one, you could literally put it on your kitchen table and just start to practice a little bit and understand how the physics work between a truck and a trailer. This should be your first step, but it is actually a helpful step. Find a big empty parking lot. Go to the defunct mall. Go to a church on a Monday. You know, find a conservation area. Some place where there's no stress where you can goof around, you know, for an hour or two until it all starts to make sense. Mm -hmm. The key thing that people don't realize is that you got to look at that combination differently going backwards than you do going forwards. When you're going forwards, you got a steering axle right in the front and it reacts immediately to input. When you're going backwards and you want the back end of the trailer to go somewhere, you're actually pushing the front end of the trailer in one direction or the other to get the thing to move to where you want to go. And you end up literally with two pivot points, your front steering axle and where the trailer is coupled. This stuff is not difficult, but it's not what we're used to. We're just totally alien to most people who spend 99% of their time going forward. So yeah, you gotta practice. Can't say that too many times, Steve. Coming in at number two, folks, never hurry. And of course, this is tied into that first one. But yes, it's very common. And I'll say the two spots where I see it all the time, the boat launch and at the RV parks. You get there. There's a bunch of people watching you. You start backing up. You get a little stressed out. And then you panic. And then all of a sudden, you're putting in these huge inputs into the wheel. And the trailer's going that way. Truck's going that way. And it's generally because you start hurrying. You start feeling that pressure. And I get it. You do want to be courteous to the other people waiting. On the flip side, if you start hurrying and panicking, you're going to spend way more time there and block them for even longer. So this generally has to do with the people watching. Just forget about them. Go about your business and take your time. 
Yeah, you're going to hit things. That's the other thing here. Okay, when you hurry. When you hurry, you make mistakes. It's that simple. And frankly, I was told this when I was being taught how to drive tractor trailer in the early 80s. And a little guy by the name of Leo Ryan, who was my instructor, a couple of days after learning, took me downtown Toronto at rush hour and made me back up across Richmond Street, three lanes of traffic, where I had to get on the air horn, block downtown rush hour traffic to back into a street side dock. You want to talk about stress and just feeling like I wanted the earth to open up and swallow me? <laughs> but Leo taught me, he said, you gotta ignore everything and get the job done slowly and safely. I can't not stress this enough. Never hurry. Coming in at number three, get out and check it out. Physically remove yourself from your vehicle, walk all the way around, and just take note of obstacles, uneven ground, things like that that are going to affect you backing up. This ties back into never hurry. People are in a rush, they quickly eyeball a spot, and they just start going for it. That's not the way to do it. Always take that extra second, get out, walk around your rig, and keep your eyes open. Once you get out of the truck, the other thing you're going to be able to do easily is look up. People forget you're driving something very tall and tree branches are not your friend. Neither are fire escapes or overhead canopies, okay? You got to know what's up there because you can't always see that clearly in your mirrors. The other advantage to getting out is when you get to the back of the trailer, look at the spot you're going into and see how wide it is. If you can establish that it's way wider than your trailer, no need to look at the passenger side again, ever. All you got to do is worry about your driver's side as you're backing in because you know it'll fit. And number four, it has to do with having a spotter. Now, first of all, you're not always going to have a spotter, but it is recommended, especially with the large trailer, travel trailers, where you really can't see behind or around that thing. Having an extra set of eyes can be massively helpful, but it can also be massively annoying when the spotter and the driver haven't gone over their hand signals, haven't talked about exactly what is going to go on, and then you get in the shouting match back and forth, and that is no fun. So we're not going to go over hand signals here, but it's just important that have a conversation and say, what are you going to do when the trailer needs to stop? What are you going to do when I need to move left or right? And even there's another point. Always use the terms driver side and passenger side, because those are the same regardless of which way you're facing. That's another classic one, right? Come to the left. Well, you're left or my left? And then that gets confusing. So just establishing all of those things with your spotter before you start the maneuver is going to make sure things go smoothly. The simple thing with a spotter, too, is the obvious stuff, which is don't stand behind the trailer where I can't see you. Always look it to the mirror on the driver's side. If you can see my face, well, then I can see you. And that has to be the line of communication constantly. And for most people who have towed, particularly travel trailers, everybody knows this is the greatest entertainment when you get to the RV park, is watching a guy try to back in with his spouse yelling at him. Well, you don't want to do that. You don't want to entertain everybody. Hand signals only, no yelling, and make sure that you're clearly visible to the guy driving. The last point we want to make, and it might seem like a little one, but again, it's one of these things that you learn and then you stick with the program, and that is back in from the driver's side only. Now, the simplicity of this is that when you are backing in using the driver's side mirror, only on the driver's side, no matter which way the trailer twists, you will have a clean line of sight. If you're backing in from the passenger side, then you will lose sight of the back end of the trailer as the trailer starts to turn. So if this means you got to go around the block so that the truck is facing the right way to get into the space, take the extra time plays back into don't hurry. Get set up correctly. Do it all right before you get started. If you don't, you'll end up jackknifed, you'll end up backing into a tree, you'll end up stuck halfway in the site and halfway in the lane, and you're going to have to face 50 campers standing there giggling at you. So, driver's side only. 
Well, folks, those are our main five points. There's one last thing I do want to bring up, though, and that is sort of uh, proof that backing up a trailer is tricky. It's all of the different technological systems we have now to help us back up. Ford has Pro Trailer Backup Assist. GM has Invisible Trailer and cameras all the way around the truck and trailer. All the brands have the cameras, actually. Toyota has a reverse system for trailers. Ram does, too. So clearly... They got the feedback over and over that reversing a trailer is hard and I don't like it. So they are trying to help out. And I will say that those systems generally work super well. I was using Pro Trailer Backup Assist recently on the Ranger Drive. Mm -hmm. I really like the way it works. It is intuitive. However, I think it has to be stated, you need to be able to do this without those systems. You shouldn't count on them. What happens if Pro Trailer Backup Assist fails and then you're in a situation where you need to back that thing up? And I'll also speak for myself personally, because I understood already how to back up a trailer, using Pro Trailer Backup Assist was easier because I can see what it's doing and understand what it's doing. So even having that context makes using those systems better. So I think that's the overall point is, we are in an age of more help than ever with backing up, mm -hmm. but don't count on that help. Still figure it out yourself, right? Absolutely. And remember always that if you can do it yourself, you don't have any anxiety. And having no anxiety is what it's all about because occasionally you will find yourself in some incredibly sticky spots. And if you can handle that pressure, be calm, get your rig out of there, not damage anything, that's it at the end of the day. That's what you want to do. Yep, and that's what this whole video was about, trying to keep you guys safe while you're out there on the road with your trailers. And now, of course, we want to hear from you. So drop in the comments. Let us know. Was this helpful? What do you back up? And what kind of tips would you like to share? We're always curious. And then, yeah, as always, while you're down there leaving us that comment, don't forget to hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, and the notification bell to make sure you get updated about all of our videos. Plus, you can become a member of Truck King, too. And then, uh, yeah, make sure you come right back here to the channel to see what we are testing next. See you guys. Keep on trucking, guys.